Okay, we're live. All right. Um, so welcome to the next APPM Hangout. This is a series of approximately monthly talks of panels that we do about issues and topics related to the photo managing and photo industry. Um, the APPM is the Associated Press Photo Managers. Uh, we're lucky enough to have our president here today, Danny Walsh, oh, yeah. as well, um, and is meant to um, bring up discussions and points and be a community for photo managers, photo educators, and photographers. Um, if you are interested in watching any of our past Hangouts or joining APPM, the website is APPhotomanagers.com. Um, we'd love to have you check us out. Um, past talks have included everything from covering Ferguson to editing graphic images to a career as a photo editor. Um, so we're really excited today to continue on with that series and be talking about getting the most out of your internships, um, how to land them, what to do with them, and how they affect your career later on. We've got a great set of professionals here for that. I'm back I teach at Ohio University and I'm on the board of APPM. We have Pat Trailer, who is also on the board of APPM and will be running the show today. Howdy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and if you would like to participate by asking questions in the Hangout platform, if you go to the Q&A panel, you can chime in questions and we will get to them as we're going. If you ask something that we know we're going to hit in a few minutes, um, we'll you know bypass it for a second, but we'll try to get it all in as you're asking. If you would like to share this with your photo community and friends, just send a direct link to a social media. We'd love to have people chime in and watch as we're doing it. Um, and I guess here we go. So just to kind of run through our panelists today that we're talking to, I'll start off with Emily Vogel, who's at NPR. Hi. We have Danny Gwalski, who's the Seattle Times. Howdy. Good morning and good afternoon, depending on where you're sitting today. And congratulations to the staff there on the big Pulitzer from yesterday. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, I mentioned Pat Trailer, who's at the Denver Post. And then we've got uh, Andrea Morales, who is a freelancer based in Memphis. Hello. And we've got Adam Wolfbrandt, who is a student at Western Kentucky University. Hey. Um, so just kind of get things started and get everybody introduced to who you are. I thought we could go around and say what you're doing now, but also how you got there and the path you took along the way. Obviously, this conversation is about internships, which you all have had. Um, so I'd love to just kind of run through and hear about where you are. So I guess we'll start off with where I started. Um, Emily, how do you feel about chiming in first? Sure. Um, yeah, so I uh, am on the NPR Visuals team, and I'm assistant producer. Um, and I was an intern almost four years ago. Um, in the summer, and uh, I was able to um, kind of work beyond the internship and um, uh, land a job and uh, have been here ever since. So, um, land, you know, that initial internship definitely got me where I am today. Um, and prior to that, I had a photo editing internship in New York City with Life.com before it was folded into Time Magazine. Um, and I had a photo shooting internship at my local paper, uh, Poughkeepsie Journal. Um, so I've kind of gone through the internship system and it's definitely helped shape my career. Okay, great. Thanks, Emily. Um, uh, Danny, I guess we'll move to you next. Yeah, um, I was a, a serial uh, intern. Uh, like, interns, internships were really important to me and really crafted um, who, who, I, who, who I've become. And so what I did is I really sought out um, picture editors that I really uh, wanted to learn from. You know, at the time when I was in school, I really believed that I would be a photojournalist uh, for my entire life. Now I'm a, an, an editor, which was a surprise to me. But um, I, I really wanted, I really, wa I really looked up to certain photo editors, and so I applied to those internships, and I got turned down from those internships quite a bit. And then I really read those letters and uh, tried to figure out what I needed to do to shape up my portfolio and my skills to get there. And so I started, my first internship was at the Cleveland Plain Dealer, and then I went to the Lima News because I wanted to work with the photo editor there, uh, Craig Oraz. Um, uh, I went to the Colorado Springs Gazette and the Evansville Courier and Press, and then um, the Concord Monitor to work with Dan Habib, and then the Dallas Morning News. So I definitely, and, and, and I think that those um, early internships really shaped my ability to get those later internships. I mean, in particular, I would really say that uh, Dan Habib at the Concord Monitor would write um, really, really good um, critiques of my portfolio in my rejection letter, and I just paid a lot of attention to that. And he also lined out like what he was looking for in a portfolio and what the winning portfolios had that mine did not. 
And so I paid a lot of attention to that and just really pursued certain stories and it helped me grow. And so, yeah, and then being in that place uh, really helped me. Now I'm at a, I'm a photo video editor at the Seattle Times. Okay, fantastic. Um, Adam, how about we hear about, yeah. a little bit about where you've been and what you've been doing? Yeah, um, so I'm a senior at WKU right now. Um, I'll be graduating in like a month. So um, I transferred schools um, a while ago, so I've had a little more time to be a serial intern as well. Um, I've had six internships so far. Five of them have been at various newspapers, and then the last one was at a creative company in Louisville called Curtis Creative. Um, so yeah, I've jumped around a little bit too. Okay, great. Um, Andrea, how are you? Okay. Sorry, I just unmuted yeah. myself. We can, okay. we can hear you. <laughs> um, so I, I'm well, hi. Um, I started, um, my first internship was at the Spanish um, version of the South Florida Sun Sentinel in South Florida. And um, it was a six-month internship, which I thought was really helpful for my first, because having never been in that um, environment, um, it, been in that kind of like job, it was nice to spend some time in a community, especially such a large community. So I did, from there I did um, five internships that varied in like paper size, um, including the, the Lima News as well for a year, which was awesome. Yeah, it was a really good, that was probably where I did most of my growing, like as a, as like a young person. Um, I'm so young, but you know, whatever. Um, and then the last internship I did was at the New York Times. Um, right before I took my job at the Concord Monitor, um, where I also, I feel like even though I wasn't an intern, um, I was on staff, I had a lot of experience. It was a small staff, so it was a lot of experience figuring out what we wanted the internship to be for people and um, talking to students as like they applied. And So I feel like I learned a lot about what internships have sort of become for people since from, you know, almost 10 years ago when I started. So, yeah. Great. Um, and Pat, I would be ne neglectful if I didn't okay. ask you as well. Sure, yeah. I, um, I interned at three different newspapers, to ran the, ran the circuit, like a lot of people. Um, just a couple little papers in Illinois, where I grew up, uh, the Dispatch in the Rock Island Argus in uh, Moline in Rock Island, Illinois, and then the Peoria Journal Star in uh, Peoria, Illinois, as well as the Hutchinson News in uh, Hutchinson, Kansas. So a few different little papers, uh, but all had very different experiences at all of them, but learned lots of things at, at all of them. And after, I had done those after undergrad, and then I went to grad school at, at Ohio after that. So that uh, definitely uh, played a huge part in my growing as a, as a photojournalist. I had never, um, you know, had a lot of formal education in it before, so it was definitely learning on the fly uh, and integral to shaping my experience for sure. Great. Um, thanks, for everybody, for running through your background. Um, I think what's interesting, and this is completely unintentional, is how many of our paths have crossed along the way. If we had, you know, could combine all of our careers together. Um, I know, for lack of a better term, I interned interned uh, with NPR for a summer and Emily. And, um, <laughs> you were a fellow. <laughs> yeah, and then there were multiple people at Lima, Danny, I was at Evansville too for a while, you know. Um, with that in mind, they seem to have really shaped all of your careers in some way, shape, or form with varying different kinds of internships. Adam, you've been at newspapers and a creative agency, for example. How do you feel it is, what's the value of doing internships, and what's the value of doing multiple internships? Adam, do you mind leading us off with that? Yeah, sure. Where you are? Um, well, talking about the creative company, um, I think, I mean, the point of internships is to learn and I think if you can find those internships that kind of expand your knowledge in places that you wouldn't expect them to, even if it's not something that you want to be doing long term, I think that's really important. I mean, I'm able to do things now that I wasn't able to learn at newspapers, and that newspaper background got me to, you know, different internships that way. Um, 
I think that, let's see, lost my train of thought. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's really important to, even if you're not doing, or you're not at the place that you really want to be even, you're still making those connections and you're still taking that time off from school or whatever to keep shooting. I mean, I think that's the most important is just keep on shooting and building your portfolio or whatever. Great. Um, Emily, how about you? You know, you've done photo editing internships, shooting internships, you now are in a position where you work closely with interns as a, as a manager and an editor. What do you see as that value? Yeah, I think it, um, in addition to learning um, new skills and kind of more about your work, um, it's kind of a sample of like what your career might be. So that was um, really what kind of shaped my path. Um, I did like a shooting, you know, local internship, and I was like, this is okay, but it's not really um, what I was interested in for kind of long-term goals. Um, and I was interested in photo editing, but I didn't really know what that was as a job. So when I got the internship in New York, that really helped me kind of solidify, okay, this is what I want to pursue, this is what I want to keep doing. Um, so I think that like we encourage our interns now um, to kind of uh, you know kind of do the, the daily work and also figuring out you know what it's like to be in an office environment since it's a little bit different than um, typical shooting um, newspaper internships, um, but also having a project that they want to pursue that's self-directed that they're um, you know that they're motivated to kind of continue on you know in the downtime or making a car you know what it's like to kind of carve time out for a personal project or a longer term project while you're still um, have daily responsibilities. Okay, fantastic. Um, Danny or Andrea, what do you think? I'll jump in. So I think that there's just different lessons to learn at each one of these places. You know, there's different, le different lessons to learn at Lima versus the Cleveland Plain Dealer versus the Evansville Courier and Press versus NPR. And so you know, internships is this really unique time where you can sort of get almost like a sampler platter. You know, you can move really quickly um, within your career path and jump from one place to the next. And it's a time that you can really learn from all of these great uh, managers and editors and other photographers and other journalists. And you can pick up on these lessons and you can grow so quickly. And so I'd really encourage everybody to really uh, take advantage of it. For, for me, I just learned um, so many lessons about who I was as a journalist and who I was as a photographer. And then I think now looking back, I also learned who I would become as an editor because I had that opportunity to work with some really great editors and I don't think there's a day that goes by that I'm not um, mm, thinking of one of those editors when I'm making the decisions that I'm making today. And so to have that opportunity, you know, it's, 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 it's one thing to meet people and to talk with them and to, to get to know them in sort of a workshop in, environment, but to actually see how these just superstar editors, you, you know, these really remarkable people who are so doggone good at their job, how they actually approach the day-to-day -day work and how they, you know, in doing that work, make time for their interns and make time for teaching and how they prioritize that, that's really taught, that taught me a lot about the kind of editor that I wanted to become. Great. Thank you. Um, and Andrea, how about you? Um, do you have anything to add in terms of like where that value of interning comes from and interning multiple places? Yeah, um, I think that I think so. I think that there is a little bit of a, like a trap almost about like when you're in photo school and then you're like encouraged to take internships and you're just sort of on this path and sometimes it's easy to be on that path and I know I found myself in this place where you're on the path and you're not reflecting enough, you're not asking yourself those questions like Adam mentioned, like, okay, I'm in a creative agency, I don't know if this is what I want to do, but, like, this is what I can take from it, you know, and I think there's been times where I've ended up at a paper that, in the end, it wasn't a great fit, you know, and it was easy to, like, walk away, kind of stomp at my feet and, like, being kind of a brat about it and be like, I'm done with newspapers, and <laughs> and there's nothing to gain from that kind of experience. But then you like step back and you're like, okay, wait a second, like this isn't really, like, this is where I messed up. This is where I came up short. This is where maybe I was waiting for someone to tell me what to do instead of taking that initiative and like instead of beating myself up, like I'm gonna go and try it in another place with another set of circumstances, another editor or whatever. So. Um, there was a lot of times at the end of internships that I felt like really demoralized because I, you know, I was interning and um, 
you know, I'm sure some of y'all can relate, like during this time where newspapers were very much in flux, there was a lot of newsrooms that were really tense, really, some had better ways of dealing with the toxicity of like everything and others, you know, did it. But um, there were so many times I'd be like, okay, this is like, I'm done with newspapers and I always kept going back and I feel like always, you know, for the best. Mm -hmm. Right, you know, that actually reads, leads into, you know, as we're thinking about, and photographers are thinking about places to apply for internships, it's kind of this unknown game. We have places that we've heard of, places that are new to us, places that we've always wanted to work. What, what advice do you have for people who are picking places to apply and preparing their applications to keep it in mind? Right, that you may end up somewhere that you didn't even expect you would land. You know, um, how do you, how do you, siphon through all of these different opportunities out there to kind of figure out how to navigate the path. Is it as simple as get what you can or is there a plan for you know what you think you want to experience next? Andrew, if you just want to lead off since you know you're just talking about the different kinds of internships you've had. Yeah, I think that um, I think that there's like mad resources right now to like connect people to past interns. Um, you know, people who have worked at different papers that you might be interested in. When a post goes up, you know, people chime in really quickly saying, oh, I work there, like, or this is a good person to talk to if you have any questions. And I think that is a really important part of uh, figuring out what it is you want. I think that it's super, super important to, like, ask yourself, like, what it is that you want to do and not just sort of be like, well, this paper offered me something because I know I've had friends who end up at uh, internships who that – work them to the bone, you know, and they don't, there's no time for that really essential personal reflection. Um, so, yeah, I think talking to people is really important. Um, I think, you know, being personal in your approach to how you reach out to the newspaper when you present your application, like being, being true to yourself and your portfolio, like knowing your strengths. Um, I think those kind of things help you narrow it down a lot quicker than you would expect. Great. You know, and Emily, for you, um, you've had different varying types of internships. How did you, you know, select where you were applying? And then also, how do you see people who are applying to NPR? Right? That's yeah, kind of a different um, path too, right? Yeah, no, it's, um, for me, I was like an NPR addict in school, and I was like, I wonder if they have any photo internships. And then they did, and I was, and it was a photo editing, so I was over the moon. But I would use that as, um, and now I'm here. Um, but you know, any publication that you're interested in, that you're, you know, they're doing good work, um, and that you want to be a part of that, is a great way to kind of start looking for um, internships and seeing what's available. Um, but also, you know, like uh, the Facebook group, uh, photojournalism jobs and internships. Um, th that's been a great resource for us to post our internship and also get. Um, see kind of what's available and like what's kind of the market right now. So if you can tell like, oh, there's tons of internships available or no, they're starting to dwindle or they're starting to change a little bit. Um, and yeah, we, we're looking, kind of our internship has changed, um, you know, different times when we've had, you know, more interns. So we're kind of looking for different qualities in each person. But now we have one intern. So we're kind of looking for, um, a, you know, a unicorn, somebody that wants to, uh, want, wants to shoot, is interested in editing, um, can be in a desk job and not go crazy. Um, and that's kind of a special skill set that we're looking for a lot of people, but also just personality. Um, and, you know, we see this kind of um, with when people, you know, kind of flood us with, with intern applications is that we want to see, you know, what this person is like and do they want to be our team member. We're going to be working really close together. Um, you know, does this person come off, uh, you know, really friendly in their cover letter? Do they come off really arrogant? Do they only tell you, you know, like, are they interested in learning? You know, these are kind of the qualities that we're looking for, which can be kind of subtle. Um, but those are definitely, those are what um, applications that stand out uh, in addition to great work. Hey. Um, I, I just wanted to jump in and say that I'm also an NPA, NPR addict, <laughs> so, um, but I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll answer the question as well. Um, for me, anyway, and uh, maybe my chunk of advice is not just to look at locations, but to look at people. Um, find the people that you believe are good teachers and, and seek them out. And, and after that, it doesn't really matter where they are because, you, you know, when we talk about good work, it's not a geographic location that does great work. It's the people who are there. And so at least at least for me, like 
there were certain editors that I just knew that I could learn a lot from, and so I really sought them out. And, and um, a lot of those are not places that I got on my first try, but I kept applying, and I, I kept learning from them from afar. Um, I kept just studying their work, um, you know, look, look, looking at the sort of work that they that 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 they were doing at their own publications in school and really learning from it and then be you know and then and then continuing to apply uh, yeah so that's that's my chunk that's, that's what I'll get great Emily do you ever see that too people have applied multiple times yeah um, and for better or for worse you know we've seen I, <laughs> the worst that I've seen is um, you know with like a we know when when cover letters are, are mass you know mass forms and the worst one I ever saw was the Washing Post. Not Washington Post, but Washington Post multiple times. The same person applied to different semesters, um, and it broke my heart each time. But um, we have had people that have um, applied, and we've we've also encouraged them to reapply. We said, you know, we want to see your work grow. We want to see you, um, you know, kind of try something else before you come to us. Um, so I definitely encourage a lot of people to reapply, and we have had um, people kind of go through our system and, um, you know, on the second try or something else. Then you know it's a better fit once they've learned a few things, or once you know we've it, just the skills that we're looking for at that semester. So it, re reapplying and staying in touch is really important, so we don't forget who you are. Right, um, and Adam, for you, as you were like uh, working through where you were applying for internships, was there anything you were keeping in mind, or how did you land from newspaper internships to a creative agency? Yeah, I mean, the great thing about going to a photo school is you're surrounded by tons of other people that have had those internships before you and can, you know, talk to you about how their experience was at those internships, and then they can connect you to the people that you need to be connected with. Um, and I think that once you are trying to find places that you're looking for, um, you need to figure out why you want to work for them. I mean, I think it's really important to do your research on the newspapers or wherever you're trying to apply so you're not writing those generic cover letters to the people and you're able to personalize them. Um, I mean, I personalize every cover letter I do just because I want to show those people that I'm really excited to work for them and not just throwing applications out. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great tip. Um, do any of you have, and Adam, you as well, do any of you have more t tips on how you make contact with a place that you're applying, um, thinking about the cover letter you've all mentioned, you know, knowing the place and doing some homework on it, or presenting your portfolio in a way, especially as, you know, for young photographers, uh, the portfolios end up being so diverse, right, as opposed to really focused style, which can happen as you grow. How do what do you look for as you're preparing your portfolios to apply, or as you're looking looking at them and looking at these applications? Um, Andre, okay. <laughs> um, so actually, um, when I ended up in Lima, it was kind of. Um, I guess I don't have any personal experience that would translate into advice. But this anecdote is kind of interesting in that I was born in Lima, Peru, and when I saw this internship for a place called Lima, Ohio pop up, I was like, I wrote this whole kind of like 2 a.m., oh my gosh, I want to make this internship deadline cover letter about how interesting it would be to like work at a place named after the city I was born in, and all this, I don't know, I was 23 and very sleepy, so who knows what I wrote, but apparently it was like charming enough and like it you know, it piques his interest, in, and my portfolio was also um, where it needed to be for me to go there. Um, so that that's just like one. I think it's okay to get like personal like that. Um, now, okay, what was the question again about? Oh, and preparing your work, making contact. Okay. You know, right. how you how you're presenting yourself and your work. Right. Okay. Right. Yes. So in that that so that kind of lends itself to that, but. Um, as far as preparing your work, I don't know. I think that being, um, I, I feel like there was a, a brief period in my life where I thought there was a formula I needed to show, like I need to hit all the points: the feature, the sports, the. And to, for some papers, you do like Peoria for Lima for the Monitor. You need to show that you need to like, you can shoot high school field hockey or something. 
um, at some point, but I think before you start addressing all those like necessary points, you make sure you present yourself as a like a voice, you know, uh, a voice and like a heart that happens to know how to use a camera also. And I feel like what, when we were reviewing internship portfolios at the Monitor, that was definitely something that stood out. A lot of the interns that we ended up hiring were people that I felt like I looked at their portfolio and could see them like being like good with the people in the community that we were hiring them to be a part of for this brief period of time. Um, and, and that's kind of like an intangible quality. I don't really know how to, uh, you know, delineate it as something that you want to work towards, but I just think that if you're earnest in your, in your cover letter and you're sincere about the moments in your photographic history, however brief or expansive it might be, um, that you're proud of, that um, that's probably a good start. Right. Yeah, and um, I kind of started the same way. Just my portfolio was, you know, the two sports, two feature, you know, the formula thing. And I think once you start going through school, you can start shaping that to the direction you want to go. Um, I, since I'm, I'm trying to go the video route now, um, I've learned while I've been in school. So, you know, my, my website, my portfolio has, you know, kind of transferred into video first and still second. And, you know, I think that's important to figure out what you want to do and make your portfolio around that and not for any other people. So. I, I'll just say that there really is no checklist. Um, when I'm looking through portfolios, I'm not looking to see whether you can cover everything. I mean, let's be honest, the internship is a learning experience. And your portfolio, your portfolio is what you did yesterday. You know, your your portfolio is not what you're going to produce for me. You know, that's that's work that's done. You've done it for somewhere else. It's never work that I'm going to be able to publish. So really what I'm looking for is uh, for potential. And, and, you know, I don't expect an intern portfolio to be completely... Uh, completely perfect. I'm really looking for potential. And as a matter of fact, when we go into selecting interns, you know, there are some years in that that we want, um, you know, that that really great, perfect, well-rounded, going to be a great photojournalist. You can just tell it has already like made the contest rounds in college and and that. But a lot of years, we're looking for somebody who needs a shot. We're looking for somebody who maybe didn't come the traditional route. And you can kind of see in their portfolio that. Um, you know, they, 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 you can tell in their portfolio that maybe they didn't go to a classic, one of the classic photojournalism schools. But you can tell that, hey, for this person who hasn't had formal instruction, there is so much potential within this portfolio, and there's really something that we can build. And if a person interned here with us, we think that we could help shape their career. So, so I'm looking. I'm looking for potential. The one thing that that I will say, like I know that we've been saying um, newspaper a lot, and perhaps it's a shorthand, but I don't see the Seattle Times as a newspaper. Um, we're a, we're a news organization, and so one thing that I am looking for within within portfolios is um, some sort of uh, understanding of online communication, and so I would say that you should spend some time making sure that the presentation of your um, portfolio online is good and and you know if you're not great with online presentation you should recognize that and really seek out um, friends or allies in making that really good because I want to make sure that you can communicate well online and I also want to make sure that you can communicate well with social <laughs> media and so I would just be mindful of the professionalism that you're using on your social media channels because we're mm -hmm. gonna look at that and we're gonna pay attention to the way that you present yourself online. Right. Emily, how about you? Um, I know that sometimes you're looking at portfolios for people who have been shooters and will also be editing at your internship. And I think this is an interesting conversation, too, where hopefully it's helpful for people who are considering applying for internships, but also for people who are hiring interns to keep in mind things that sometimes the person who's won all the awards, there's another person who's a great fit. Emily, are there things that you look for? Yeah, we um, we always kind of look for somebody that's a little bit different or has a little bit different experience. We do want to have those like kind of core skills, like you know we don't have to tell you how to sh how to shoot. We you know we want to see your personality through your through your work, what you're interested in, 
Um, and that can be different for every person. We're not saying that we want to, you know, we don't have that um, any, you know, check boxes that we're looking for. We're not looking for a certain number of sports, certain number of features, certain number of video. We just want to see what you're doing and what you're interested in. Um, so seeing the personality through their website, and um, I totally agree with Danny, is that um, we just want a simple presentation of your website. It does not need to do 20 different things. It doesn't, you know, it needs to be a step above, you know, a Flickr stream or an Instagram account. Like, just something in between where we can easily tell what the photos are, what your captions look like, so we can get a good sense of what you've done already. Um, and, yeah, we're, we're interested, we're just kind of looking for somebody that wants to be an editor, maybe not doesn't want to be an editor as their you know, end goal for their career, but is interested in editing. Because we don't want to have somebody that just wants to be an NPR, but also thinks that as soon as they get this, their foot in the door, they'll be shooting all the time, because they won't. Um, there, we, but with that, we do have a lot of shooting opportunities. So it's kind of this balance where we're not looking for somebody who's already kind of given up shooting and only wants to be an editor. We want somebody that kind of fits that in between. So every time it's, it's a struggle trying to figure out you know, who's the right fit, um, especially when there's been so many great um, qualified candidates. Um, but uh, this coming semester, our intern for the summer, she had his, um, a dual degree in archaeology, and we just thought that was so cool. Um, and she's kind of at, she wrote in her cover letter, she's like at this point where she's not sure if she wants to pursue photojournalism or archaeology or something in between. Um, so we're kind of interested in seeing like what you know the internship um, brings to her and if that shapes how she wants to be and then having her get her feedback on, you know, what does she want to work on and what is she um, craving and what are, what are some skills that she wants to get from us. So kind of being flexible um, and then offering, you know, if, we, if she wants to shadow somebody and getting kind of getting those connections so that, um, and we offer that for all of our interns. It's just trying to, like, there's other places in, the, in this news organization that you can kind of follow and it, not just in our department but across NPR. There's tons of former interns that are, Reporters, you know, Ari Shapiro is a pretty um, prominent case. You know, he was a, a Supreme Court intern, and now he's in London as our, our correspondent there. Um, and he was at the White House pre uh, before that. So um, NPR is very, uh, they treat our, their interns, you know, as teammates. So they're not, they're not getting coffee. They're not, you know, if anything, we're getting coffee for them. Um, and in most cases, um, but it's it's uh, kind of building that um, that relationship because we often go back to our interns, you know, for freelance gigs. You know, you're part of like the NPR network or you're part of the NPR family now. Um, we still, you know, interns from you know three or four years ago are still freelancing for us at different um, different times of the year. That's great. Um, as we continue on, and I want to ask you all um, about you know you kind of mentioned finding your way in that community at NPR, for example. Um, I'll take a moment to remind everybody that if you'd like to participate and ask questions, you can do th so through the Google Hangout platform. And please share the link um, of what you're watching on your social media accounts as people chime in and out all the time. Um, I'm curious as to when you start a job or an internship and you have 10 weeks to six months to make your mark and to learn and to figure things out and produce great work and get the most out of the opportunity, what are those first week or two like? That could be two weeks to settle in. doesn't sound like that long, but it can be a fifth of your time there, right? Mm -hmm. um, what kind of advice do you have for people as they land and they're living in a new space and city and sometimes a not-so-great apartment with other roommates and trying to figure out public transit and all these other things that we can bombard it with of living in a new location and a new workplace and a new boss and new technology that we may be working with. What kind of advice do you all have for people as they start these internships? I'll actually take it back because, you know, you said, you said it exactly right. You have 10 weeks, 12 weeks, 6 months. That's such a short period of time. I mean, that's really about that's less than the time that it takes to do a good photo story. Mm -hmm. And so you really have to realize that your internship, your internship in some ways begins as soon as you get um, accepted for that internship. And that's when you just need to start really digging in and looking for story ideas. You should start, you know, see, take, take a quick look at what sort of stories we've already done or what sort of things we're doing and then start generating ideas. And, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing stopping you from, uh, now that you have this relationship already started with, with this editor or this collection of editors, you should really be bouncing story ideas off of them. I mean, I, I tried, um, you know, when I was at the Dallas Morning News, I tried to have a good solid list of story ideas and I, and, and I put that in the director of photography's office and we went over them and we discussed them and then, and then I was off rolling and I kind of knew what I would be doing 
for for the time that I was there. Um, I think that you sort of want to be looking for a couple of short-term stories or medium-term stories that you can really get rushing right into. Um, you, you sort of need a medium-term story that you can just sort of like dive right into and start right off running so you can get your feet wet and then be ready to start. If you want a longer-term story, realize that you need to start that in maybe week two or three. So you start pursuing that medium-term story you know, from, from, day, from day one or two, you know, and then you start laying the groundwork for that longer-term story while you're working on that other one. Great. Um, Adam, what about you? As you're stepping, as you're somebody who's stepping into these internships right now, you know, are you doing your homework, as Danny brought up, are you doing your homework about potential different lengths of stories and the place before you even start? Yeah, I mean, I, like, once you land that internship, like, that's all I can do is research the place and research everything I can to know everything I can when I get there. Um, and I think that you should embrace, you know, going to a new place really quickly and jumping in as fast as you can. I mean, I think that that's the exciting part about internships is you get to move every summer or even more frequently than that for some people. Um, yeah, I think you should just embrace it. <laughs> what has that been like for you is you might move into an apartment one night or a room one night and the next day have to show up for work. Like what advice yeah. you ever walking in the door and feeling like you're ready? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've moved places for internships without actually having a place to live. And, um, you know, you have to figure out that as you're starting sometimes. And I, I think it's hard to juggle, honestly. But, um, I mean, you'll get used to it in a week, I think that the w first week might be the time that you have to settle in. But after that, I think that you just got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Andrea, how about you? How do you get, th get the ball rolling quickly? Um, I, I don't know. I guess I'm, I'm a, a really terrible planner in general. Like, I would always do my homework and get there, and everything would be like the opposite of what I wanted it or what I needed it to be for me to move forward. Um, so, I don't know, my planets don't align perfectly. Um, but, but I think that being flexible was helpful and um, being kind of, like, obsessive about getting out and, like, being at, like, the farmer's market and, like, smiling at everyone and just, like, putting my face out in, like, the community, like, talking to, like, the dads on the sideline and, like, trying to find stories and, like, on, like, the edges of my assignment um, because, because of uh, sort of all that planning that always fell through. Um, which is fine. Uh, but I also think that the sense, once you, like, that the suggestion to do, like, a mini story and then also uh, lock into, like, a larger story, a more complex story um, simultaneously, I think, is really important because that sense of accomplishment of when you finish that mini story is the biggest boost, um, for me anyway. Like, when I accomplish something, it's really helpful to uh, motivate me to want to, like, make that next goal. Um, so, yeah, just even if, like, you're demoralized or having trouble um, with your bigger story, you know, if that's what you decide to do, to be able to, like, make sure that you're, you're uh, making the most out of, like, opportunities that cross your path so that you feel like you've, you're exercising that storytelling muscle, um, whether that's video or still. Can you expand on that a little bit in terms of uh, making the most? Does that mean you're a yes person when you're doing internships, or? Oh no, hell no! Because uh, I think that, <laughs> that that's like also a really easy trap as a young person. You know, like especially if you're like a kid like me that was raised to be like, you have a boss, you know. And when I hear Danny talk about his like experiences with editors and like seeking them out and seeing them as that kind of person like for me I wish I had that you know like because when, when I was going through my internships I would see my boss and be like well you're my boss you know and that I think that is a preventative mindset to to making the most out of to being able like to like check in with like 
So there had been times where I was working on stories, and because I felt like I wasn't where I should be, I would just sort of like hide from my editor. So I was like, oh no, like I'm so ashamed. <laughs> Uh, you're my boss. I'm supposed to be doing everything right. Um, so I think that yeah, you don't want to be a yes man because I think that that robs you of like your agency to be the best storyteller at any given moment. You know, um, you don't want to just. There've been times where in at the monitor where we were in like kind of like a hectic like employment fluctuation situation, and the intern always uh, would have to like step up way beyond like you know, what any intern should. I, I don't know. I, that's not the right words. But, like, there have been times where they had to say yes, and then I felt like I'd have to pull them aside and be like, no, you know, you don't always have to say yes. It's okay that you're working on this other thing. You're still doing work for us, like, to advocate for yourself and also, like, have clear relationships with your, with your coworkers, with the folks that you're photographing. Like, it's all... <laughs> I went wide. I went wide. <laughs> <laughs> um, and well, and then I mean, what you're talking about too takes so much connection with the people around you, right? To be open and honest and form those relationships. Emily, I know when I was working with you for those couple of months, it would be getting coffee and lunch, right? And that chance to connect outside of just the your office and the cubicle space, right? What are what are ways that you guys look to connect with interns as they're coming in the door to get over that you're my boss aspect <laughs> and actually a person that I'm working with, right? Yeah, well, I mean, what we've done is we usually try to have, like, a team lunch that first week so that, um, you know, we're asking them questions, but they're also getting a sense of, like, our team dynamics and how we kind of hang out together. Um, and for me, like as a manager of interns, like all the points that you said earlier about, uh, you know, getting, you're just trying to figure out how to use public transportation to get to the place on time and you're wearing an ill-fitting suit and you're not sure what's going on, you know. So like um, the first couple days I try to, you know, with the training and like, you know, taking things a little bit slower um, because I have done that in the past where I'm like, okay, here's everything you need to know, bye, and it's just too much information at once. So trying to ease people into a new work environment. Um, and then encouraging them to ask a million questions. Like, if they have any hesitancy, just ask questions. Um, I had an internship at one point where um, kind of my boss said, you know, if you have any questions, you need to ask them all at once. You need to, if you have five questions, you cannot come to me five times. Um, and I, it, it, you know, it creates mistakes and it creates people panicking, not sure what they're doing, um, and it totally creates that wall between you know, editor or boss or, you know, intern. And so um, I try to make that as clear as possible, as, like encouraging that conversation. Um, and we try to have check-ins, too, with our interns kind of throughout the semester, say, hey, you've been doing great so far on this. You know, is there anything that you want to do? Is there anything that you're looking at? Um, and then working with them to kind of shape story ideas because typically we have had um, people that haven't had work on a national level. So um, a story idea for a national level is different than one at, um, at a local level. So we're trying to figure out a way to kind of, you know, just doing a profile on the guy that has a cool job that, you know, how does that connect to the broader stories that are going on? Um, so just trying to figure out that. Um, so continuing that conversation, um, you know, trying to do it not on deadline. <laughs> I, I feel like we've all um, came really close to making this point, but I just want to stress it. I mean, one of the things that uh, I think is really critical to taking full advantage of your internship is all of the people sitting next to you. I mean, it's not about it's not just about your relationship with your boss, but it's about these people who are now suddenly your peers. All of these amazing journalists that you get to sit in the room with, and so that's really, really cool. And so don't don't forget to take those moments. I mean, yeah, you might have an apartment; it probably doesn't have any windows anyway, so you might as well stay at the office and take a moment to show your work to the people sitting around you. Reach out to some of the really amazing journalists in that room that you get to hang out with for 10 weeks and learn how they approach their job and get their input into their work. I think that one of the things that, um, you know, when I talk to the other uh, photojournalists on our staff, I think that that's really how they see whether an intern is successful, is whether those conversations were started. And at the end of 10 weeks, if they feel like they didn't even get to know a person, that's actually how most of the photojournalists here define uh, failure and success. So I would just take advantage of that time that you have to get to know and to learn from these people who could easily be your mentors for the rest of your life. 
Great. You know, and I, I want to keep this conversation really positive, but you know, Danny, what you brought up can, can also lead into, is there anything an intern can do that can flatline an internship, that can take it from the most of an opportunity to kind of affecting that? Yeah, I will say, actually, I have um, an example in particular where we had an intern come in, and I totally, I totally see where he was coming from. He really wanted to prove himself, and, and the way that he wanted to prove himself um, was by showing his knowledge. And he always wanted to tell everybody how much he knew. And what he was missing was that there was also an opportunity to listen. And 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 so we actually had to ha sit down and have a really deep chat because you know, and we we talked about how interns succeed and how interns fail. And and I'm so proud of him because he actually turned around and was able to spend a little bit more time listening and learning. And at the end, he had a better internship because of it. And the way to, the way to show your knowledge, <laughs> you know, because we all do. Like we want interns in here who can teach us. Gosh, we love learning from our interns. And and that's that's really critical, but you know, it it needs to be a conversation all the time and, and like as much as we want you to teach us we really want you to, to listen to us as well and just keep that conversation going. Anything else for any of you guys that is something that's just kind of a you know taking what could be a no-no and repairing it along the way and transitioning out? Or we could also bring up how to what happens when things happen, right? Life happens. And I occasionally see young photographers who get nervous about things like a family event came up and they don't know how to talk to the person, their employers and their coworkers about the fact that they might need to be off for a day because of this as opposed to taking vacation in the middle of a 10-week internship. Or what happens if you've applied for multiple internships and get two offers at the exact same time or a day apart, right? What advice do you have when people are so worried about screwing it up, or if they have screwed it up, what to do from there. I don't want to dominate, but I think that you It's a complicated question, I know. <laughs> well, I mean, and before we're interns or bosses or managers, we're people. And, and so I think that as long as you go about these things in a professional manner, it's all right, you know? I mean, as much as personal things come up in your life, they come up in my life, too. And I look up to the people who helped me out when I needed a hand. Um, so like as, as for things happening in your personal life, just realize that we're all people. Um, as for a fear of failure, well, you know, like I said, an internship is a learning experience. And I don't expect you, I don't expect our interns to do everything perfect. As a matter of fact, I kind of expect them to screw up. And whenever I launch into like a, a video project, this is one of the reasons why I think that you should start in a smaller project first. I kind of expect, whenever I'm teaching video, I kind of expect the person to screw up their first video project. That's why we have a first video project with the anticipation <laughs> that we're going to have a second. And so don't be afraid of failure because it's those failures that are going to help you learn. Just make sure that <laughs> those failures are uh, you know, not, not, not on your huge project or not in a, <laughs> not in a huge place. But, but don't be afraid to fail. We, 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 want, we want you to, to learn from those experiences. How about you, Adam? Have you ever dealt with, you know, that starting off fear or maybe your first internship versus now how you are? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I feel like early on I was so afraid of everything. I mean, I was afraid that, you know, my boss hated me and I couldn't do anything right and whatever, but I mean, yeah, I think that yeah, the expectation is that you are an intern and that are learning from this. Um, and I think that, you know, you shouldn't make this over and over again, but um, I wouldn't be afraid of, you know, pushing your limits at an internship either. So, and just real get over the fears that the irrational fears that your bosses hate you because it's probably not the case <laughs> <laughs> and so people have started internships they've been working internships they've been working multiple internships what happens when you finish an internship right so for you Andrea you've interned at newspapers worked at newspapers and now you're freelancing how have those impacted your freelancing what have you taken with you now that you're on this this new path yeah um, 
Well, so, I mean, obviously, I think having interned at a newspaper on a national level was helpful for me now that I'm, like, freelancing down in here in Memphis. Um, I get one of the Times is probably one of my main clients now, and, and I appreciate that, um, but I also get client work that's very similar, really similar in the vein of, like, a lot of the work I did at the community papers I was working at. Um, you know, a lot of the things I did at the Monitor, these kind of, like, two, three-day, like, bursts of, like, focus on a topic or an issue or a person, uh, you know, we did that a lot, and um, same thing in Lima, you know, you would, like, just, like, focus down on one person, one topic, one place for a few days, and you produce something, and I feel like that's the kind of a thing, like, I'm in a part of the country now where I'm fortunate it's not super saturated with freelancers, and um, that makes it so that a lot of the assignments I get take me to sort of away from Memphis into different communities for uh, short periods of time. So I feel like I'm employing a lot of the things that I learned through both successes and failures at internships um, here, you know, like how to, how to work quickly, how to make the most out of, like, you know, I have to tell the story of, like, um, you know, gay marriage in Alabama in, like, a day and a half. Like, how am I going to, like, make the most out of that? And I feel like that there's a lot of parallels in, like, the skills I learned in the different places I was able to work um, to what I'm using now. Right. How about you, Danny? Oh, okay. Well, so when, when your internship ends, you know, all that's changing is your business card. Right? It doesn't change who you are, and it doesn't it change the stories you're pursuing. So hopefully during the course of this internship, you probably have started some really good stories that you really care about. So don't think that you have to abandon those stories just because your business card changes. You're still the journalist you are. And, you know, these relationships that you have um, with your uh, mentors and your peers, those can go on your entire life. And those are the people that you may come, you know, you, hopefully you'll find one or two people that you will always be in contact with. And don't think that your relationships and your friendships and um, your teachers change just because your business card changes. Good point. Emily, Adam, how about you? What happens when you're done an internship or an intern leaves? Um, I mean, I think that, you know, the, a good thing about internships is that you are able to make network with people all across the nation um, and you're able to use those people's references or they're able to pass along your name to other potential employers or whatever I mean I think you can build some really strong friendships and relationships that can put you in other situations and lead you to other places yeah, definitely. I mean, um, we always ask our interns to stay in touch because um, freelance assignments come up, you know, randomly, and they're usually our first ones that we go to. If we know that um, we need something out of Austin, we often are going with our, our former interns out of there. Um, and it's really, you know, it's really cool how quickly your former intern becomes your peer at somewhere else. You know, Chloe Coleman was our intern um, when Becky was with us, and um, she's at the Washington Post now, and I text her all the time, like, we're looking for somebody in XYZ. Do you know of anyone? Um, and it's not that, oh, you were the intern, I was the manager. It's it's totally on peer level, um, and we're able to kind of exchange that information really easily. So staying connected and letting people know where you are, you know, just sending a little note, and um, you know, we ask, uh, or you know, we're offer. We can also offer advice. You know, we can say, "Hey, this might be a great opportunity for you. Let us know, or or like, you know, you're in. Let us know if you're interviewing for somebody. We will find someone that we can talk to to tell them how great you are. We want you to get hired. We want you to, you know, be successful. Um, if there isn't a position open at NPR, we want you to be successful somewhere else. So we're always trying to fight and, you know, figure out our, our networks to try to get other people connected um, with our people, too. Fantastic. Um, we're coming to the end of our hour. We don't want to take up too much of your all's afternoon. We know you're in the middle of work days and, and last week of classes and freelance <laughs> jobs and all sorts of things. Um, any parting words of advice for either people who are hiring or young photographers who are starting to find their way? That's a big question. <laughs> I'll, I'll go one for both. One, one thing that I 
just wanted to be really clear about is I do think that when you're applying for internships, it is important to start early uh, in your academic career. Um, you know, I said that you know, this, uh, here at the Seattle Times, we do want to give people a chance and everything, but we are rarely their first internship. And so we sort of want to see the work that you've done in previous internships. And if you're working that internship you know, after our application date, you know, we're never going to see that work. So you need to start early so you have a gap in between your internships so that you know, your next internship can actually see your work. Um, as for people managing interns, you know, I, w what I really appreciated when I was an intern were those moments when my editors really, really trusted me and they trusted me with big stories and they trusted me and they allowed me to do the work that I believed that I needed to do. And so my biggest advice and the advice that I always try to follow myself is to trust those interns and to allow them to allow them to grow, to let them to let them see how high they can go, even if that's higher than they've ever been before, because you know they're they're there to be trusted, they're there to learn, and um, I think that everybody gets more out of that experience with that trust sort of built in. Anybody else? Some parting words, Andrea. Yeah, sorry, I just like don't know when it's my turn. Or... <laughs> <laughs> I can just jump in. You just yeah. Jump in. Okay. Um, well, no, I mean, it's been awesome to hear uh, from Danny and Emily because it seems like y'all are really uh, wise and kind about how you want to, like, create an environment for your interns. So I think that that's a really good, um, you know, note to take uh, for other editors that, um, yeah, the trust is important and um, giving people space to, like, grow into themselves because, you know, you're coming in, you're bringing in people in their 20s, in their early 20s, sometimes a lot of, you know, there's non-traditional folks who are also doing their own, having having their own learning experience. But, um, yeah, getting them to, like, be advocates for themselves, I think, is, uh, is not an easy thing, um, especially when you have to, you know, also manage, you know, you're part of the newsroom. So I think that's a really valuable thing. And uh, for interns to sort of, in the words of um, the great Julie Elman, to like dare to suck, you know, if you're going <laughs> to you're you're blow it, you know, like you can't let, I don't know, who knows? You, you, you might not blow it. Like if you're going to do it, at least do it boldly, like be yourself, be true to yourself. And I know that's kind of like, you know, summer camp advice, but... Um, <laughs> But I think that there is like, there's a lot of truth in it. You know, I think it's easy to lose yourself when you're trying to um, trying to succeed. Um, so as long as you're you know, honest with yourself, the people that you work with will want to fight for you, et cetera, et cetera. Adam, Emily, any parting parting thoughts? Um, I think if you're starting off, you know, early in school or um, early in your career, I think. It, it's a good idea to have a goal of where you want to be in a couple years. Um, I mean, if you want to work for like the New York Times or whatever, you should like set that goal for yourself and then start making those connections with that place you want to be and keep applying. And then, you know, if you keep working at it and figure out what you need to do to be there and actually do it, then there's a good chance that you'll actually be there. So. Good point. It's like visualizing, visualizing where you want to go, right? Yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, goal and goal. it's 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 right. nice. It's um. <laughs> There's lots of steps in between that. So figuring out what those different connections, what those steps are, you know, between your first job and your goal and your dream job. So I think that's a really good point. Um, yeah, as far as parting words, I just think for interns to take advantage of everything. Um, if there's a happy hour with you know somebody that you want to, that you're interested in, or just some you know talking to um, other people in the newsroom that you have a you know you're just like oh I don't know what that job is and just you you know trying to trying to break down any barrier and just say, hey, I'm interested in what you're doing, I'm an intern, like that's usually enough to say, okay, so let's spend the afternoon together or let's spend, you know, an hour together. Um, so not being afraid or not being um, kind of, you know, in a box where you're like, well, this is my internship and this is what I need to do, but also figuring out different ways that you can collaborate within other people, you know, other interns or other people in the newsroom. That's great. I mean, really a lot of what I'm hearing is just, 
for an intern, be yourself, be knowledgeable, be prepared, and be nice, right? Yeah. And so, <laughs> um, thank. I know this got me really excited to share this with other people. Um, thank you all so much uh, for your an hour out of the chunk out of your afternoon. I really, really appreciate it. We all really appreciate it. Um, for those of you who are watching or chiming later, this will be archived at apphotomanagers.com slash hangouts, and it will also be running on um, our partnership with the Photo Brigade on their live channel. And we're glad to be able to uh, work with them to continue sharing this content. So again, thank you all to this great panel for, you know, as we're all trying to figure out how to navigate this crazy profession, um, I think it was really insightful to hear from each of you and your diverse range of backgrounds and knowledge. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, thanks for having us. Yeah. And thanks, everybody out there. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> thank you, guys. And thanks to Pat as well for continuing to run the show. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, All right. Check out next month, and uh, we're not sure of the topic yet, but we try to do these around the end of every month, and so we look forward to seeing you all back here again, maybe on a future panel, or at least as part of the people asking questions. So thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Bye.